I, I just noticed, uh, you know, that every once in a while we have wonderful husband and wife teams uh, receiving the offering. And Tom and Firm Moffat were serving us today. That was so nice to see them. Very cool. Hey, I forgot to announce, let you know that, you know, for your Christmas gifts and things, the warehouse, you know, Pastor Robin mentioned, a lot of our 40th anniversary gear is back there, all kinds of things you can get beyond that as well. Uh, the read through the Bible in a year, we have some of those. So if you want to start off this year with, hey, tackling that, you know, laid out for you devotional series, it's laid out every day. You have an Old Testament, a New, a New Testament, a Psalm, and a Proverb. And then you will go through the whole Bible uh, in a year and just turn it by date. It, it's really nice. It's a nice Bible. I've read mine for, oh God, 25 years at least. Um, it's wore out. It's beat up. Read through the Bible in a year. And then the wood shop, you know, the guys have been really busy. They make these flags. Uh, they can personalize them. They make journals. Uh, we have an engraver. We have uh, the, the laser burner. Uh, there are some of the nativity scenes that for $125 make a great gift for yourself in your front yard, uh, but also maybe for somebody else. Uh, that's available for purchase as well. And all the money that the wood shop guys that they make those proceeds, proceeds go into our car care where we help single moms and widows uh, with some of their car needs, you know, some of the minor stuff. Um, so it's just a great thing. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want to talk to you about the, the power of little things. The little things. So many times it's easy for us to think about the grand things, the big things, you know, you want to hit a home run. Life's not full of a lot of home runs. Life is full of a lot of little things. I want to talk to you today about the power of little things. Um, I have quoted many times, I throw it out there, because it applies to so many things in life. Proverbs 13, 11. Great gain is gotten little by little. And I think I quoted and remembered it uh, from the Revised Standard Version, which I think we have up here. Wealth hastily gotten will dwindle, but he who gathers little by little will increase it. So the paraphrase of that is great gain is gotten little by little. And obviously it's talking about money here, but really it applies to everything in our life. Everything in our life. It's little by little great things are accomplished. I mean, I think about the fact that when Orlean and I got married, it was glorious. It was heavenly. It was like, wow. And you know something? She has not killed me yet. That puts us at 41 years of marriage. That's a great thing. Yeah. But how did we get there? One day after another of her deciding to let me live. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone does. Nobody wakes up and says, you know, I want to be a bum. I want to live on the street. I don't want to ever have any money. I don't want to, you know, have any friends. It, it just doesn't work that way. I remember about 25, maybe 30 years ago, sitting at a presentation from Zig Ziglar. Many of you will recognize the name. Great motivational speaker, positive thinker. He said, to quote, people want to be happy, healthy, reasonably prosperous and secure. They want to have friends, peace of mind, good family relationships, and hope. That's what everybody wants. They want those things. And you know how you get there? By little things, little choices that you make. Friends, this morning, I want to share with you just a very simple message. You're going to hear me say the word little a thousand times. Okay, maybe not a thousand I want to just emphasize that one point to you this morning. It's the little things in our life. I mean, even last week as we celebrated 40 years, what a grand celebration that was. And, and it is really fun to kind of come in a little early before the service starts and watch the, the scrolls, watching because they've changed it from last week to this week. I'm not sure if they're planning on doing that, you know, indefinitely, but it's so cool to see new pictures coming up there and we're like, oh my gosh, look at that. You know, we, we were young. In fact, some of you up there are so young, I, can't, I can barely identify who you are. 
Um, 40 years we celebrated God's blessing, God's goodness. His goodness one day at a time. God's blessing taking us through. We do our best and God's blessing following his leading, his provision, everything that God has done. You know, we just have always around Maranatha, you all, as part of Maranatha, we've just tried to do our best, and God has added his blessing. I'm so glad that many of you founding people, and many of you that have been coming the last 10 years, and five years, and three years, you give, not for you, but for those who do not yet come. Just like others have sacrificed for you to be able to have a place to come, and you're here today. Amen? Um, thinking about just God's goodness. And, and last week it was fun to reflect on just a lot of the, as I think back, just the little things that we've done to make, make it to 40 years. Um, and obviously last week we talked about our successes. We celebrate the successes. But let me tell you what. If I could begin to tell you about the mistakes, the failures, the shortcomings, the inadequacies of myself most often, you realize that God's goodness is always there in this idea that we try. God always asks us just to try. Amen? He doesn't expect us to be perfect. In fact, he knows we can't. None of us can. We can't be. He says, I know your frame. You are made of dust. I, I love that phrase. It encourages me a lot, especially if I really screw up. God, you knew it. God, you knew it. Lord, help me. But you know, little things, little by little, Great things have happened. Okay, so this morning, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Judges. We're going to go in an Old Testament passage. If not, follow along up, up there. But Judges, chapter 12. Judges, chapter 12, verses 5 and 6. The Gileadites seized the fords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. And when the Ephraimite who escaped said, let me cross over, the men of Gilead would say to him, are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then they would say to him, then say Shiboleth. And he would say Siboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him at the fords of the Jordan. There fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. All over the little sound of the letter H. Say Shimeleth. Simeleth. I remember as a young ke- little boy te- teasing our mother because she, French Canadian, I mean, she could barely speak English when I was born. Okay, not exactly. But there were some words that she just could not say, um, like Hubel. Can you say Hubel yet? Let me, let me hear it. Say it again. Hubel. Say it really loud. Say it really fast. Say it really slow. <laughs> no, isn't it kind of interesting? Little thing. Probably one of the slightest, smallest things. A little thing like pronouncing a word enabled Jephthah's army to determine whether somebody was an enemy or a friend. Life and death really depended upon that little pronunciation for 42,000 people. You know, it wasn't the first time something little like that happened. In fact, if you go to the New Testament, chapter, Matthew chapter 26, Matthew 26, verses 72 and 73. Matthew 26, verses 72 and 73. This is where, you know, Peter had said, I'm never going to deny you. You know, I'm willing to die for you. And Jesus said, you know, you're going to deny me three times before the morning comes. Verse 72. But again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, 
for your speech betrays you. You know, I always oftentimes tell a story when I get here that, you know, Peter began to curse and swear. And um, just a little side note, we find it in verse 74. Then he began to curse and swear. So every once in a while people think, oh, Peter did not. No, it says right there he did. He began to curse and swear. Well, I can't wait to get to heaven and talk to him about that. <laughs> Little things. Little things. Little things make a major difference in our life. It was one little cord, one little red cord that saved Rahab and her family. It was one little stone that landed in a Goliath's forehead saving Israel. It was two little coins given by a woman that's gone down in history as an illustration and an example of generous giving. It's one cup of cold water that Jesus described as great service done in his name. One touch at the hem of his garment brought a cure to a woman who had suffered for 12 years. It's the little things that really make a lot of difference in our lives. Little things that can bring great blessing and great changes in our life. Or little things that have devastating consequences. It's usually the little things. You see, even Solomon said it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It was Samson who told a little secret, and it cost him his life. Ananias and Sapphira told a little lie they thought no one would notice. Achan hid a few little things in his tent, and it cost his family. How many lives have come to ruin by the little poor decision? I'm going to have one last drink, then I'll go. One lingering look. A decision to go there instead of there. To believe what someone told you without looking into the facts. You see, it's the little things that can make all the difference in our life. This morning, I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to, we're going to have communion together and really try to be focusing and thinking about it's the little things. You know, it's the little decision that you make to come to church every Sunday. Or those of you who are watching by tuning in and making this a part of you. And at your earliest convenience, I hope you come back and join us. Although it's the second best to watch it at home, there's something about being here together, having fellowship. So, so we, we look forward to you returning. Iron sharpening iron, one man rubbing up against the next. This idea of the ecclesia, the called out ones, sharing fellowship together. I'm amazed, and I hope I'm not talking to many of you online right now, but so many people have told me, you know, hey, Pastor Mike, just to be honest, not like I was prying. It's, like they, it's almost like they feel like i got to tell somebody this. You know, to be really honest, we've just gotten lazy. We got in the habit of just staying at home. Now, if that's you, you get your butt in here. <laughs> if you're home and staying home because of illness or because of your know, precautions and all that, well, then, then you do that and feel safe. But if it's just because you're being lazy, get with it. It's a little things that usually bring great success. Victory and prosperity. You see, the nickel's bigger, but the dime's worth more. I remember 30 years ago, Brother St. John, our, our former district superintendent, who I had the privilege of serving with as a presbyter and an executive presbyter for years, um, I remember early on him describing his prayer life, that he imagined when he went to prayer for his kids or for whatever he's praying for, in his mind, he imagined himself being a block layer. And he was laying a block 
as a wall of defense against the enemy. To set a protection for that which we was praying against, against the forces of evil. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. Amen? That's what this life's all about. And he had this word picture of laying a block. Now, I have to admit, by itself, you think about that little block laying there all by itself, not going to stop a thing. Not going to stop a thing. But after 10 years of laying blocks, you got quite a wall. And it was ever since then that I determined that there's seven things I pray for my kids every day. Because I, too, adopted that mindset, that mindset that great things are accomplished little by little. Daily, I pray seven things for my kids. And now my 12 grandkids. 12. Can you believe that? How many of you remember the day that I was pleading and hardly waiting to be a grandpa? Do you remember that? I drove you crazy. It's like, God, I can't wait to be a grandpa. Can't wait to be a grandpa. Now I got a dozen. <laughs> little buggers. Some of them aren't so little anymore either. Uh, one is a senior in high school. And uh, he, uh, now, now I'm just bragging. This is terrible. Um, but in football, Brandon won the most improved. He also won, which was elected by his peers on the team as having the, getting the leadership award. That he was, you know, the leader. Uh, uh, just like, that's just so incredibly, incredibly cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He thinks after his grandpa. Um, <laughs> now I'm just being silly. He takes after his dad. That's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so what sport did you let her in? <laughs> I let her in wrestling. I just, now, now we're really being silly. <laughs> oh. You know, it was, and, and you know, I, I have no idea of measuring the success, but I have to believe that there is a successful thing that's been accomplished in my laying one block every day, again, in my mind as I pray for our kids. I'm building a wall. I've been doing it for 38 years. Well, not 38 years, about 25, 30 years. When I heard Brother St. John talk about that, I started in my mind putting and building a block wall for my kids against the forces of evil. Orlean, I remember her saying to our kids, a thousand times, if I heard it once, your life is the sum total of your daily decisions. It's every day you're building your life line upon line, precept upon precept. So many times, you know, our lives are struggling or maybe they're even a failure and we want to go out and just do a glorious thing and we want to make a big change and we want to whatever else. And I'm telling you this, great things are done little by little. Little by little, great gain is gotten. Your life is the sum total of your daily decisions. Young people, let me just talk to you for a minute. You know, you can, you can choose to wear that if you want to. You can choose to tattoo yourself up. You, you can choose to, to put holes in jewelry where God only knows. You, you, I mean, you can choose to have an attitude. You can choose to color your hair. You can, choo you can choose whatever you want. You really can. We live in a great country. And it's not a moral issue. It's not about, you know, Christianity. Well, as a Christian, you can't do it. No, it's not, about, it's not about any of that. It's just about this. You need to understand and realize this. Every choice you make has a consequence. How people are going to perceive you. How are they going to treat you? You see, I would defend your right to dress and look any way you want. But as an employer, I would also support and defend their right to not hire someone that maybe looks or dresses or acts like you. Does that make sense? Micah, chapter 6. In the book of Micah, we read just a great emphasis of the idea that it's the little things. In Micah, chapter 6, 
verses 6 through 8, there is this, as we read it, there is a, a slow escalation of value. As the prophet says, you know, what, what, what do you, God, what do you want from us? You know, is this what you want? Is this what you want? Is this what you want? Should I give my very life? I mean, it just escalates up. Follow, follow this, the little description here in verse 6 through 8. What shall I get, come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? A small little thing. With calves a year old, escalated up a little bit. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Ten thousands of rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? I mean, God, what, what do you want? We, I mean, you are God, and what should we do to serve you? And God's answer, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? It's simple. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Friends, if you and I could do that simple little things, that simple thing, it really puts it in perspective. We concentrate on all this big stuff. What I want you to do is to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with, my, with me. Jesus, when he walked this earth, he said a very similar thing when he said, all the law and the prophets are summed up in these two commands. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's simple. You see, it's the little things that grand things are built upon. It's the little choices that you and I make that determine where things are going to end and how things are going to go. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Think about the little things and the value and the meaning it has to people. I love you. I believe in you. Versus, you idiot. You stupid. You're never going to mount anything. I love you. I believe in you. I, I know that this didn't turn out the way you were planned, but you know something? You'll do better next time. I did a funeral last Tuesday. And at the funeral, I was talking to the people there, and I said, you know, so many times we, we look back, and it was, it was a sudden death. It wasn't prolonged. It wasn't expected. It was just a sudden death. Took the family and everybody, spouse, everybody by surprise. And I said, you know, right now, you wish you could say something to this person. I mean, and I challenged them. I said, if you could say something to them, what would you say? I can only imagine what went through their minds, as even now, you're thinking through your minds, what would, what would you say to someone if they were gone and you had a chance to say something to them? I said, why don't you say that to the people who are still alive? A word fitly spoken is like apples of, apples of gold in a setting of silver. You can do it. Just try. You're valuable. You can make it. 1 Kings chapter 19. You see, the power is in the little things. 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah is up in the mountain. It's a well-told story. Verse 11, he said, go out. God said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. 
And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. I mean, we're talking power here. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You know, I think so many times I, like you, look for the big, the glorious, the miraculous, just this power display of God. When I think so many times we miss the opportunity by quieting ourselves to hear one of the most powerful things we ever could, and that's his voice in our ear. There are times I remember in my life when God has spoken a word and it changed everything. Not just by what he spoke, but by the fact he spoke. It was like, he knows. He knows where I live. He knows me. The tithe. It's a little thing. And this ain't a, give, a message on giving, so you relax. We're not taking an offering. But you know, so many times people, they, they argue and, they, and they, they butt up against the wall about this tithing. You guys, it's the little thing of great success. It's a little thing. Monday, a couple came into my office and uh, they, they were coming for some other reason. They weren't grandstanding in any way, shape, or form. But he handed me a check for $100,000. And I said, wow, I said, you know, Man, you guys are just so gracious, you know, and, and such giving people. It was, it was uncanny. It took me by surprise. She, without missing a beat, said, we're not generous. That's not ours. Amen. I was like, man, they truly understand this concept of tithing. They were expecting to have a, a payout over several years, and, and it got in one, and anyway, he's... She just, when I said, well, you guys are so generous, you know, thanks for your contribution and, you know, to the ministry and your commitment. And then she said, we're not generous. That's not ours. I was like, set me back on my heels. I was like, wow, how true. Their life has shown the evidence of great things are gotten little by little. You see, tithing is a little thing. But, oh, it can have some incredible changes in our life. Just a little side note, they then handed me a check for $50,000 for a project that we're trying to do around here, and I said, now you're being generous. She smiled and said, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, it, it's just this... Great things will not define you. With this, I'm going to close, and we're going to have communion together, and you're getting out, of here, out, of, er, out here early. So somebody, please, where's our producer? Where'd she go? Someone go tell uh, Pastor Tina that we're just going to be starting communion in just a minute, so she can have a heads up. Friends, great things will not define you. You will not be defined by great things. You will be defined by the accumulation of the little things that you do in your life. It is those little things over time that you are going to be remembered for. Oh, the great things, that yeah, doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, back in the day when uh, Charisma Magazine did an article on me and all that, I mean, I had my 15 minutes of fame, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know something? Nobody remembers that. Where are they? Um, nobody remembers that. I mean, I barely remember it or ever think about it. No, my life, just like yours, is going to be determined by the little things. The power of little things. As we come upon communion this morning, I want to just challenge you. What little things can you do in your life to start building today? for your future. You want to implement them now. 
It doesn't matter how old you are. There's always time to make little changes. Amen? You know, I think one of the, the greatest little things that we do to our detriment is we tell little lies to ourselves. Well, I'm a, I'm a giving person. Well, let's look at your record of giving. No, you're not. You're lying to yourself. I'm, I'm a... I'm a Someone's got a microphone live somewhere. Um, you might say, well, you know, I'm a, really, I'm, I'm a really loving person. Well, let's ask the waitresses and the service people that you have enacted with and come in contact with. You see, you, you could be telling yourself a lie. You'd like to think you're a good person, kind, thoughtful of others. One of the greatest lies that we tell is the little lies we tell ourselves. Some of the greatest things that'll be accomplished in your life will always start with a little start. What will those little things be in your life? I think one of the greatest little starts is when we start with, as we come to the communion table, when we remember that we were bought with a price. None of us are all that. We are only anything because of what he did for us. Amen? I'm going to ask you to come up this morning and receive the emblems. I'm just going to take it from you right now. The gluten-free. No, no, I want all the fat and butter and taste I can get. It's the little things, man. Thank you. Sis, thank you. It's the little things. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know how to gain weight? Little by little. You know how you lose weight? Little by little. I mean, it's... What I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment is to come and receive the emblems. Please go back to your seat. Sit there, then we'll all partake together. You know, this is a little thing. We do it in church once a month. We come up and we, we do this little ceremonial thing. But do you realize it is one of the uniting foundational commands of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do this in remembrance of me. And in so doing, you proclaim my, 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 uh, his, his death and resurrection until he comes. This little act is profound. The Apostle Paul tells us on the night he was, he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and given thanks. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So we take of the bread, remembering that his body was broken for us. Let's partake together. Likewise, also, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it, and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it as often as you eat together. Heavenly Father, we do. We drink it, and it is a, it is a memory that brings us a sense of grief. But it is also a cup of such joy because it was through this, your sacrifice, that we have the forgiveness of sins. We rejoice and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let's partake together. Praise God, God is good. If you wanna just pass the cups amongst family members, we're going to have, ask you to hold them and deposit them on your way out. Um, just as we go, just as a quick little sidelight, 
um, just because I was having fun teasing and harassing him, I noticed my grandson is here. Brandon, would you just stand? I didn't notice that you were sitting there earlier. There he is, right there. Yep. I'm proud of him, not because of what he accomplished on the football field, but because one day at a time, making some good decisions, along with unfortunately some bad ones, the good ones, making a good life. Brandon, I love you. Praise God. Let's stand together as we sing a chorus together. Oh, <laughs> sure, let's do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and especially this time of year, right? I mean, this should be what we do, right? Yeah, get loud. Right? It might get loud. Well, it might get loud. Oh, heaven's coming down, down, down. It might a little decision to be loud the rest of my life. Quiet, silence, we don't want to hear that. Can't help it. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen. Praise God. Yes, and uh, when it comes to dessert, I'm going to have a little and then a little more. <laughs> Praise God. Heavenly Father, as we are dismissed from this place, I, I realize that there are some people sitting here this morning they're facing some incredible, the results of some poor, poor, poor choices. They sit here overwhelmed, wondering, will they ever make it out? Will they ever have a hope in a future? Father, we speak hope in a future into that situation. Father, we pray even now that they would realize that it's by daily good choices, a turnaround, a repentance, a going the other direction, that the harvest of evil is thwarted and a harvest of righteousness is redeemed. Father, we thank you. We pray victory in these situations. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, tonight, 4 o'clock, if you're looking for something to do, 4 o'clock, watch the kids. I know Orlean and I are going to be here because they have cookies afterwards. You are dismissed. <laughs>